and I always say never reach farther than you're going to pull. Because if you reach farther than you're going to pull, usually when you're coming back, you're sinking it as you come in the water, and that creates a cavitation. So, if you're looking at Robert, then what are we looking at? Well, I look at, he's short in the water, right? So, long arms, tall body, long torso, big guy with a lot of, ton of potential for power and efficiency, and then he cuts, he doesn't have a lot of pressure with his weight on his top hand, and his paddle's not in the water long enough to make the boat travel far every time he takes a stroke, and that's what he should have. Okay, and then how about... How about Darren here? Darren, was well, paddle's too short because it's a surf paddle, right? Yeah. So you see him, he leans over a lot when he starts to paddle. But um, his feel and his length in the water is actually very nice. Okay. You can see that his... So what I try to look at is... When you look at Robert... Okay, so Robert... So over here? You know, the, the time that he adds, has pressure is pretty short. So the speed that his paddle's coming through the water is kind of quick. When I watch Darren... I see he gets good length on his stroke, but the speed that his paddle is moving is the speed the board is moving. So the efficiency is good. He has a nice, what we call, feel for the water. So his feel is good. So he actually looks pretty good, but his paddle's too short? Yeah, his paddle's too short, so he has to lean down a little bit. Looks like he might bend his bottom arm on the pole a tiny bit. So if he went hard, that would probably be an issue. Okay. Um, but hard to say, like, with what's going on right now. But what I can tell is the time he spends in the water and the speed he spends in the water and how fast the board's moving is pretty good. For Darren. Yeah, yeah for Darren. How about for her? Um, she loses the front of her stroke. So by the time she applies pressure, she's already like halfway back. Uh huh. And she loses a lot of power, a ton of power, especially in the front when your body weight can be on the blade. Yeah. Okay. So on Roberts, he's still kind of short. Yeah, really short. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna call them back in. Yeah. you have for the water is good. You grab the water, you're patient, the board moves the same speed that your body or the blades are the water. The paddle looks too short for me because you know the board or whatever it is, you have to bend down and you need to wait to get a lot of water lines. And when I look at it, like you're splashing the front so the gravels are a little bit, a little bit better. And with the timing of the water is nice, the timing of the board and the blade moving together is nice. To me, you have real nice feel. Um, there's probably, a, if we look again, a bunch of other things I can look at, but the first thing I look at with somebody is how fast the top hand is moving, how long the pressure is on the top hand, and the speed of the paddle as it moves compared to the board. And that part is pretty fun. It looks like you have a tendency you want to bend your bottom arm a little bit. Mm -hmm. So I think if you were to go hard or sprint, that arm would probably bend a little sooner. And then that takes, you know, a lot of times if you bend your arm too quick, you get, you go to bicep instead of using your lats or larger muscle groups. And a lot of times the forearms will swell up or your, your hands a bit. At what point does the arm, should the arm bend? Right? I always say, we've always, like, we've always taught this, kayak K1, Tahitians, when you look at them paddling, uh, C1, you know, Olympic boats, everybody goes elbow to torso. So elbow to torso is a really, really good guy because from here to here is pulling and power and leverage. Any time back behind you is very hard to push. So it's really hard to do this, but it's really powerful from here to here. And usually that's right about elbow to torso. Right as the elbow gets the torso, you break it. Breaking really is that. Got a question? Yeah, so how do you um, balance between a shorter paddle, which makes surfing and turning in ways easier, versus a you know, paddle that's more suited to correctly stroking? Well, I think with surfing, you don't have the choice, right? You gotta have that shorter paddle for maneuverability and everything. So, I mean, if you're gonna do a downwind run or you're gonna do a race, yeah. then longer paddle if you're gonna short, you know. Surfing, shorter paddle, you just have to get to the water. The only thing that hurts you is it's a little harder to get the blade in the water where you want to be, but, I mean, look at it, it's just a sprint, you know, to get on a wave. Is it better to bend your legs to get the blade in the water or to uh, bend from the hips? I think a little bit of both. Because, you know, the hip, the leaning over and the hip drive is a, is a that helps you. You know, if your legs are too bent, then drive off the leg. Yeah. And it has to be in a position where you can actually push off the legs. So. And I'm not a real big fan of leaning way over. Because I think sometimes when people lean way over, they try to push behind them instead of grabbing water and pulling into you. How do you, how do you tell if, um, like, pushing 
forward too much with the top hand versus you know pushing down correctly like you're saying. Down is kind of simple. Oh, I mean, a really good guide, simple guide is fine. So if you're holding here and your wrist does it actually, so you're back a little bit. The wrist is back, the angle will be okay. A lot of times, when you see people go, you see the knuckle roll, and that's when that blade is pushing this way. Oh, right? So pushing down is usually with the wrist a little bit back, and actually pull your knee like this, on this lap. Oh, so actually the wrist is actually coming down. And you do it naturally. So I think that's what kind of keeps your paddle in that water. Yeah, you don't really push forward, I mean, at least at this intensity. Yeah. Cool. So, did you go, do you know what you need to change? Um, well, it's basically the paddle is too short. Yeah. So, I love to, um, with you, and I watch you paddle, I mean, it's hard to, you know, at this intensity, like I said, if you're up on a higher intensity, then all your mistakes show. So, this kind of easier stuff is less, you kind of got to pick it apart a little closer. True but I see water hmm. in the front of your stroke. Yeah. So, you probably hear noise. And if you do, that's bad. So be a little more patient on the stick. Yeah, be a little more down on it. Be a little deeper on the catch. And, and you have a good, you have a lot of length on your stroke, which is really nice. But you have a little bit of slip. How do you know? How do you know what's the right amount of twist, for, you know, versus just straight reach? I well, too much twist, too much rotation, you lose power. Right. I mean, there is such a thing as too far forward. But I always look at a, a guide. If you kind of, to me, if you really want to know where your reach is, uh, one little drill you can do is you put your paddle in sideways like this, all the way in the water until the water is here. Okay. And then you just keep it in the water. You hold it, hold it, hold it in the water. Don't let it come up. Don't let it come to here. Keep it all the way in. And as far as you can go this way, where it's in, put a mark on your board. There's your mark. If that's where you can reach yourself physically. And I always say, never reach farther than you're going to pull. Because if you reach farther than you're going to pull, usually when you're coming back, you're sinking it as you come in the water, and that creates a cavitation. Got it. Right? I mean, cavitation doesn't uh, happen because you need to have solid water on both sides of the blade. If you have solid water on both sides of the blade, the blade won't move very much, the board will move, right? If you start to sink the paddle before you sink it and get solid water, then the water travels around to the back of the blade. So the water is moving now and the paddle's moving instead of it being completely locked on both sides and then the paddle being stuck in the board heavy. So if you're reaching too far, then you're not going to get a majority of the time. Stick. If you're reaching too far, you'll sink it as you come in. And then that leaves an air pocket back here. That's how I see it. And then this water is now moving around to the back, so the paddle's moving. You want that paddle to go like, say there's a mail slot, and that paddle goes through the mail slot, and then it's connected. So you gotta be a little, yeah. I mean, you wanna be in and engaging really fast, but you wanna learn that step slowly. So it's a patience thing, once you learn that patience thing, you can do it quicker and quicker. Yeah. When, uh, when you drive with the legs, is, is there a direction to how you're, you know, exploding with the legs, especially on a sprint? Yeah. The upwards I mean, or forwards or... I mean, to me, you want that engage, that connection to your feet pushing forward. And is it the foot on the side of the blade yes. or the... It's the side of the blade, yeah. But not so much to where the board's leaning, right? I mean, you want engagement with your feet, but you want weight on your blade. So if you try to drive the legs too hard or you're leaning on that leg, the board's going to move. Yeah. You know, you want the weight on the blade and then the connection to your feet and then that can move forward weight on the blade first, yeah. connected to the feet. Yeah. And you kind of want that to happen together. As soon as you go in, you like right away are okay, connected. But you want to be all the way in before you do it. Yeah. So a lot of people, if they have like the slip in the front of their stroke, will have them just practice drills to where they set the blade and wait, and then pull it. And then they learn, oh, it feels really heavy. And then you know, okay, you set it, and now you got that lock. So once you learn that feeling of lock, and even if you go fast, you look for that feeling. And you know if you don't have it, right? you take one stroke, you go, oh, that one wasn't locked. I know on the next one, okay, lock it. But in order to learn it, it's always good to take your time and do step by step. Is it possible to sink the blade too far, or is that never an issue? I never see it happen. And you know, your top hand, where your top hand is, if your top hand finishes super down here, <laughs> then something's wrong, right? But, I mean, usually most people, it's the opposite. Their top hand will be here. And there's nothing. I mean, it's not nothing, but I call it there's nothing on the screen. 
there's no real good engagement in the game. Oh, that's helpful. Okay, so, like I was saying, when you're getting videotaped, you're, you don't have enough engagement for long enough on your stroke. So with your size, you're throwing out a minimum 30% of what you have. Because you're trying to stay kind of high and short. And I think maybe you're trying to come out quick or whatever it is, but the front is a little short and the back is a little short. So your time in the water for your size and your speed is way too good. And one of the things that can probably change that, first thing you gotta change in your mind, is the time that your body says it takes to come from here to here. So right now in everybody's mind, you know, with his thought process, it takes him this long to come through one stroke. And his body's used to that. Every time I take a stroke, I'm supposed to be in the water this amount of time. With you, you're thinking I'm supposed to be in the water this amount of time. Now that, you gotta change, and that's the hardest thing to change. So you'll probably have to feel like you're pulling twice as long to get 30% more on your But one of the main things that's not happening is you don't have your weight on the blade and you don't have that much engagement from the top hand and the time that you have engagement on the top hand is way too short. And what happens is when you reach like this with the elbow up, there's no weight on the blade. So from here, I can't lean. It's too hard, it's in here. But if the elbow's down and the wrist is back, all your weight comes from that. And there's a ton of power here. No power. So in the beginning, you want to think you come forward, engage this way, and lean down on it. Power comes from here, and not just half the body. Okay. Yeah. So if you take, put your hand up there right now, and then just see your elbows up. So that's wrong. Right? Yeah. Okay. So now just take this hand off, and just lean completely on that blade with your whole body. Feel the lat. That should be a weight. That's half your power. Most people will twist too much. And then here, I lose, I don't have any engagement. It's only half the body, it's only the pull. You know, from here, just a little more square. Just a ton of power, not like pressing down power as well. So that's even, I would say, even too much. Just get to the point here where you can lean and get this lap. And then the time that you spend on that. So, more reach and longer pull and longer attack and more. Yeah, but that engagement down is going to be very important because you go from here to here. So your stroke is only this. Yeah. Or it could be just really a lot. Size, length, you got length. You want to go as far as you can through the stroke and not be like just, you know, taking a little stroke. It's all about travel for stroke. Okay. So, elbow, keep the elbow down. Use, but maybe less twist so I can use more Just of the Just get to the top where you can push. engage it. Yeah. yeah. And then longer, longer time in the water. Yeah. The first thing so, I would do... So not worry about where it come out, really? Or? I mean, it's... Everybody talks about, oh, if you come past this point, you're pulling the board down. And that's, I think it's pulling. You know, the only time you're going to see any problem with the paddle from the back or far back is if you actually push this hand way down and lift the water, which not many people do. Or you bend that bottom arm and you pull up so hard that you're pulling the board. So everybody's kind of caught up in this, oh, come out of your feet because you're going to pull the board down, but you're not pulling the board down. But you're actually coming out of your feet, you're not going anywhere. You're going to take a thousand strokes instead of seven hundred. Right? Yeah. So regardless of whether you're in a displacement hall or a flat, Type of well, I mean, that makes a difference. fact is, you're not planing until you're both full. In fact, I mean, that's, I mean, they get up a little bit and they do something, but they, it's kind of hard to plane. Yeah, we've actually had that discussion. So, what? How, how do you de define planing? Like, what is planing? Planing is when the board is actually riding its own or above on the weight, right? So, so basically, if more than half of the lift comes from dynamic lift. Like the board pushing the board, um, the water pushing the board up. Do you find that? Is? So I, mean, I, I mean, I think it's a to give it, in to give it a amount of like a speed is. I don't think that's accurate either because you know, like like a super wide windsurf board with a flat flat bottom yeah. will plane very easily and early, much earlier than 
let's say, say and over your canoe. What speed? Yeah, because we've, so without I don't know if they ever plane really, but. Well, they've tried it. Right. People have done chines where they actually plane on a wave, mm -hmm. but then you suffer when you're not on a wave. Okay, so I have a hard time really understanding planing at six miles an hour. But to me, the flatness of the boards you need for stability. The difference between hamburger and stand up is you have one has stability and one does not. So if you have a flatter bottom, you're going to paddle harder and you're not going to be tippy. But I would think a rounder bottom a little bit would be faster, but honestly, I'm, to me, the jury's up. I mean, I hear a lot of people say planing at a lower speed, but I am not totally convinced that it's not. It may be up, it may be not dipping down in the back, it may be not focusing. But I don't know, maybe. Yeah, I mean, to me, when, yeah. when we're riding bumps on a, on a stand-up board with a flat bottom, like, oh, you know, a lot faster. Um, yeah, I mean, but you can kind of feel when when you're catching the bump, all of a sudden you're, the board kind of rises up out of the water, right. and you can feel that the lift comes from the water. You know, you're skimming over the surface versus pushing through it. You know, that's and on then, a wave. Yeah, on a wave when, yeah. when you're gliding, and, and but it can be under, like it can be like you know, it's nine, yeah, ten miles an hour. So you're you know? seeing it a little. Yeah. Lower. So I, yeah. and then you have to move back. You can really, right. uh, you know reduce the weather surface and so on, and then yeah, and then when you slow back down to like maybe say eight miles an hour, then the so, board drops back yeah, down again. Sense. So that's, I mean, to me, that's your your planing until you feel, you know, you have to move back forward to the middle right. and use the volume. Of the and that makes sense because you're on a wave when you're planing when you're on the wave. I mean, stand up straight downwind in a Hawaii Kai run are really fast okay. because they're on the wave for a long time. Right? So they are clean. We did, like with the outriggers, we kind of looked at the time you spend off a wave or at a lower speed is more time than you spend when you're on it. So it seemed like the planing hull didn't work as good. But who knows the conditions downwind, but you're going what speed, right? Well, and the other advantage we have on the stand-up is that we can move our weight way right. back, so then we can get that board out of the water and just so you can build You can build a board that has different rocker that you can move around instead of having to be on the spot. Right. Yeah. Alright. <laughs> yeah, we kind of have that discussion online, so... You're, right. you're thinking eight or nine? Something like that, yeah. I mean, not I think it's less, it's less, it's less than 12, no, not at six. Yeah. Not, I mean, you can't, and on flat water, you can't get the board on a plane, you know. Some right. people are talking about like planing on a flat water board, but I mean, to me, that's maybe you getting on a glide, and maybe a lot of it comes from dynamic lift, but I don't think you're actually planing, you know, where, where the, you know, basically when you're planing, the water, like sprays off the bottom. It doesn't really wrap around the rails at all, right? It's just yeah. the bottom lifts and the water comes off the side. So if the water's wrapping around the rails, you're still displacing. To me, I don't know, that's kind of how I would find it. Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So it's flat water. Like so a lot of people say, oh, on, in boards on races when it's flat that they're planing, and I don't think they are. Yeah. yeah. But definitely, we do downwind runs, and you give Scott Gamble a head start on a Waikai run, and you're in a one man. You better not give him too far because he's going fast. You know? <laughs> yeah. 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 Alright. So, you know what changes you're going to make? Yeah, I think so. Um, should I just summarize it? Yeah. So, elbow, keep the elbow low so I have more pressure on the top so hand engage, pushing yeah, down. Yeah. yeah. And uh, maybe not quite as much twist so I can keep that pressure from the last one pushing down and then just try to get more more um, distance per Yeah, and you can use your top hand as a guide. If you finish here, there's, you're not getting enough pressure on it. So if you want to get longer pressure, you just press the hand longer. Okay. So if you have the good engagement here, you're just pressing farther, farther, farther. That gives you the length of the water. Okay. Yeah, let's try that. Okay, let's try Thank you. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Please comment, give us a thumbs up, and see you next time.